I see a newspaper as a civic institution, as a kind of civic responsibility. I think in Dallas we like to talk a lot about uh, a great city needs a great art museum, a great city needs a great concert hall, and on and on and on. Well, a great city needs a great newspaper, I mean, to keep, to provide some sort of perspective, to, to, to inform people about what's really going on uh, in the city, to, to uh, push an agenda, to, to articulate a vision, help to articulate a vision for the city, to, uh, to, to, to uh, sketch out a future. I mean, all of those things are very, very important. It's a civic, it's a civic undertaking, I think, not just a money-making undertaking. It has that other side to it. And I think the civic part of that is what's going to be, I'm afraid, lost in this current situation. I think most of the people who are, who are leaving are very, very talented. They'll land on their feet. But I think the city will lose considerably in arts coverage, in other kinds of coverage, uh, by virtue of what's happening. And I think that that's that's a civic, I think you have a civic responsibility to, tell, to, 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 to the people of Dallas to, to inform them as much as you possibly can about what's going on, what the future might be like. In my beat, for example, architecture, it's the city is being rebuilt again almost overnight and who's, we need to be saying something about it and what it means and, and how it fits into other patterns and what do we like compared to other cities. I mean, this, papers are about perspective. They're about setting an agenda. They're about moving the city forward. All of those, I think, are civic responsibilities. It's an absolutely critical time in the city. I mean, this is Dallas. I came to Dallas and came to the Morning News in the, new, in, the, in the early 1980s, when the city really was in its first, you know, modern boom, and things were just exploding everywhere. And nobody was saying anything about it, and basically that's why I was hired, is that that, that was basically the mandate. The city's being re rebuilt overnight, and nobody is saying anything about it. It was news. It still is news. Dallas has finally arrived as a, a, a cultural and architectural destination. Uh, we like to talk about Dallas as a city of the arts, but most of what we had before, it was just hype. It was just, you know, just, just smoke and mirrors. Now there's really something there. I mean, now we have the Nasher Sculpture Center, now we have this Performing Arts Center coming along, we have the Modern Art Museum in Fort Worth. We have the Trinity River Project. We have a comprehensive plan. We have Calatrava Bridges. We have the redevelopment of Fair Park. I mean, on and on and on and on. And this is not the time to be silent. This is the time to be engaged and involved. Well, when I came in the 80s, I had no journalism background at all. I was an academic, and I had been teaching at SMU. And then I, I left SMU, and uh, I, was, I was writing. Uh, I was writing a fair amount about Dallas and the way uh, Dallas had no architecture critic at that time at all. But I was writing about the city in magazines and locally and nationally. And I was approached uh, by then managing editor Bill Evans, who basically said, uh, The city is being rebuilt overnight in front of my eyes, and I don't, can't make any sense out of it. And I don't think anybody else can make any sense about it. Would you like to make sense of it? I think some of those frontier myths are true. I mean, uh, if I were in Boston and New York, there would have been 50 people in line for that job. And here, there, were no, there was an absence of precedent as one of the most, uh, uh, one of the great things about Dallas. I mean, nobody kind of, they'll take you at your word and let you try it out. And so uh, that was what I was brought in to do. And, um, but what was interesting was that I was allowed and encouraged to throw as wide a net as possible, that I wasn't simply to write about buildings, I was to write about the city. And that meant writing about planning, that meant writing about urban design, that meant writing about politics, economics. So from the very beginning, and, and uh, I'm sure there were times when they regretted the job description that they actually gave me, I, I was allowed to cover the city. So I thought of myself as an urban writer, an urban critic, more than just an architecture critic. And by and large, uh, that's been true all the way through my career here. And, uh, and I've said, Repeatedly and to everybody who asks, I mean, for, it, it's what for me was one of the great, great jobs, the best job I've ever had. But also, I know what other critics on other papers go through, from the New York Times, the LA Times. And this was one of the very, very best situations because people left me alone. I mean, that is to say, they, uh, if there was a, if I got into trouble, as I frequently did, uh, the, the response was not to have send somebody down from management to, 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 to you know, take me to the woodshed, it was simply say, he's our critic, you go talk to him. We're not going to talk to him. I would get in trouble because there had never been a critic here before, never been an architecture critic. Nobody ever said it. This is a developer's town. 
Nobody ever said anything about development except let's have more of it. Uh, and uh, when you said this is a really lousy building or this is an irresponsible thing to do or whatever, whatever I said, and I said fairly frequently, uh, people would get very upset and they thought the, the way the one dealt with that sort of thing was to call the publisher or the editor and have that person chastise the writer. Well, that rarely happened, almost never happened. Uh, and I was uh, so eventually either, I can't tell if they got used to me or I just got soft, but I mean there was a kind of uh, a balance struck at some point where I was simply allowed to have my say and I appreciated that and I tried to do that responsibly. I recently wrote an article about Performance Park, which is a new public plaza that will connect the Opera House, the uh, Meyerson, the uh, new uh, theater in the Arts Magnet High School. And I gave it a very harsh review. I thought it was not what was not up to not up to par. It was underworked, and I said that very clearly and bluntly. The, the, this performance park, which I thought was simply subpar, I actually referred to as a miniature as a miniature golf course. So in the past, somebody would have uh, gone right to the editor, or publisher, and said, you know, how can he how can he possibly say that about us? Or we're a civic organization. We're trying to do good in Dallas, and on and on and on. This time, the uh, the perform the uh, public relations person for the Performing Arts Center brought me over a putter, a golf club, a putter, and gave it to me. Uh, and, and I thought both it was very funny and really classy. And I, uh, I thought it was a mark of both respect and, and also of, of, of just given good, good, healthy give and take. And I really appreciated it. And it was nice to have it as almost the last thing I, I, I received at the paper.